we if you guys do command option i in max in windows i'm not sure but you can right click and then hit inspect so the browser is an environment that your code runs in so when so when you go to the console this is basically a, an environment that you can type in code and it'll run so you can do you know let global var equals David and then now when you console log global var it'll say David David and this is I know you guys can't see this but this is the global scope and so I can access certain things like window which is a it's just a key word that is in the global scope and any function that you define can have access to like window and also document is also I think one of them I'm sorry, but did you, used to open that up? you can do in on max go open the browser and then hit command option I or right, -click or right click the mouse and then hit inspect and then go to console and, and you can see all the I mean it's cool because you can see all of the elements of HTML directly in this and you can like even change stuff like if I want to change the color of this button, I could just inspect the button and then I can, uh, let's see, I can like just change the color to like red. Well, actually, I guess this is not actually the element. Let me see. But yeah, you can basically play around with this and do like you can change the actual web website because these are all just files because web websites are just files that a server gives to your browser so you have complete access over uh, the files and the code that makes up this web page you have complete access over it but it's only on your machine obviously you're not changing it for everybody else because if you wanted to do that you'd have to change what the server serves up to everyone but your own local version of the files. You can change it. You can change the JavaScript. The JavaScripts, if you go to the um, sources, you can see here in um, app.js, like this is all the JavaScript that powers all the events for our, our learn.site. And you could change it, but because it structures the code where it, it's more optimized, like we can't really understand it because it's all like jumbled up like this. But it's just like the structure, yeah. The code logic is the same. But yeah, you can access all these files directly on your browser. But again, things like document, window, they're all in the global scope. And um, what was Joel? Joel? Yeah. yeah, as Joel alluded to, um, Global scope means it's outside of any curly bracket, like all of the curly brackets or functions or, yeah. Huh? Yeah. It could be, it could be it below, could be it, below it, it, but it just but can't it be, be on the outside, yeah, it can't be wrapped. Right. So yeah, this is the global scope in our case, and it'll log, or you it'll, it'll first log undefined because we haven't declared it yet. So here in this scope, it looks, it like doesn't know that this has been declared yet, so it's just undefined. But after you define it, it'll know what it is. Oh, but it can be. So this is the declaration. So right here, when it logs, it logs undefined first. No, you can't have it that long. So if you use it, you can instantiate after the condition. No, no, no. So, well, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can. You can, but it will come up undefined. Well, for, well, if you're logging it. For doing it. Yeah, yeah, you're logging, you're logging it. If, you're, if your function is trying to use the variable. So for the variable, it goes. It reads line by line. Right. 
Right, so it won't work. Right? So, yeah. for example, it's still a global variable, but it's just not used. I guess it would work in the function, it just wouldn't be logged. Yeah, so this is still a global variable. These are all global, actually. So this is a global variable, and then you can define a global variable on, on the, under a function or under many functions, but they're all global because they're at the outermost level. Right, so mm -hmm. do I call global by two or general global by two? No, well, 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 it won't. Yeah, it'll be undefined because you'd have to do it yeah, above line seven. That's what it yeah. I just want to make sure I understand. Yeah. yeah. But, if, but if you put the console log below line seven, um, yeah. it would be defined, right? Yeah. The JavaScript reads from top to bottom. Yeah. Actually, that's a good point. Let me see. Because JavaScript also does some weird stuff called hoisting, which we'll get to later. But. I think it might depend on when you call it. Because if you call it here, if you call it here, I think so. Because when you, if you called it here, it would say global, f oh, global var2. Yeah, it says global var2 is not defined. But if you call it after, yeah, because, yeah, this won't run until you've already declared it. So I think, yeah, it's just like the or like where you call it. But this is still a global variable, and so is this. And this is a global function. Had you used var, it would have worked, right? Because that would get listed. I think so. So if I use var, it's a good. These are all very good points. So hoist means like, even though you declare it below something, you can. It's like while the JavaScript engine is running, it like lifts it up to the top. Oh yeah. In this case, so like in this case, like the global function, like even though the global function is above the global. Yeah, I'll get to hoisting in a bit, but yeah, functions are all hoisted. I think variables are also hoisted, but I'm not. Uh, let me let me see, because variable, like the the, I think the instantiation of this this variable can be hoisted, but I think the the assignment might not be hoisted. So let me just test it out, though. So here, I think this will still be undefined. Yeah. Yeah, it's undefined. Because basically, what's being hoisted is this. So this is going up here. But then the actual assignment still happening under it. So you can do something like this. Like var global var2 and just don't even assign it. So this is instantiating the variable. So this gets hoisted up. The instantiation gets hoisted up, but the actual assignment doesn't get hoisted. The actual assignment happens still happens here. So when you call this, it's undefined. This is undefined. But for let, I don't even think that, I think the, in the uh, instantiation of the variable isn't even hoisted. So that's why it was throwing an error, because it was like saying like that doesn't even exist. But for var, it, the the instantiation gets hoisted, so it says it does exist, but it just doesn't have a value yet. And it's all very kind of confusing. Um, but a no, good. I, no, I think I get it. I mean, because you're saying that um, for let var searches for the variable anywhere, but you still have to make sure the assignment happens before the function. Otherwise, if the assignment of the value to the variable doesn't happen before the function, 
then it will turn up undefined. Yeah. Yeah. If, you you if, always want to have assignments yeah. happen before the function. But my thing is, you shouldn't even do this period. Like, if you're going to use fun variables in a function, you should define them in the function. Within the function. Yeah. yeah. You shouldn't it's, it's really. Practice. This, yeah. This isn't good practice. And I'll show you guys why. I'm not show you guys why right now. But yeah, I can show you guys why right now because I think it's a fitting time. Like the, you shouldn't ever declare things outside of the function that you're going to use it in. Because let's say that I had an example like let uh, let boss name equals like uh, like Brian or something. So that's my boss's name, and then. Let's have a function that, uh, well, actually, let's just do, uh, let's do, uh, hmm. Yeah, let, let boss name equals Brian. And then we'll have a change of leadership function. And what this will do is this will <laughs> set the boss name to um, John. And then, right? And then, so this is happening. And let's say somewhere else. So this is a global variable, which means multiple files. Let's say this is just one file, but let's say multiple different files have access to this boss name. And so this is within our, our one of our functions, but I mean, one of our files, but let's say a different file needs this and expects this to be Brian. But then if you change it within your function here, then another function, another file that expects this value to be uh, this value is now, is now basically going to have a variable that it doesn't, it doesn't expect it to be John, but it is because some other function change the global variable. So global whenever you have a global variable, you should never you should never change it because other files that are gonna expect that value to stay the same are now gonna be mistaken. So in this case like continuing to use this boss name John instead of and like outside of that function instead of being boss name to be Brian, it's not going to be boss name to be John. Yeah. But if you were Yeah, then that would just be for itself. Like it would just be contained within itself, within this own scope, and it wouldn't affect this right. at all. Yeah. Can Mark, you use right? uh, const up top to avoid that problem um, in most of your code. Like if it was const boss name, you wouldn't be able to change. I think you. Sh I think you can still change the you can change value. The function. Oh, but but boss name is not defined within the function. Right? Let me see. Yeah. Well, it's defined there as John, but I wish you like a some sort of like precursor to the let or something. So like, oh wait. Oh yeah, you would need a let on the inside. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, you're right, right. You need a let inside the function. Yeah, you're right. It doesn't. If you assign it a const, then it will disable it from but being able to put, reassign what it. What if you put let in front of the boss name within the function and you call it within the function? Oh, that, then then it, then it doesn't matter. Yeah, then it right. won't change, yeah. Because yeah. cause, um, it's still B Brian, because this is your local version of boss name. Yeah. And but this is the global. If you wanted to call the boss name, if you're like running a huge function, and then you wanted to call the boss name within the function, then it would still call it John. Yeah. It would still call boss yeah. Name. So you probably want to give it a variable Be different name just to keep the name John. Yeah. yeah. You probably want yeah. to, but you could, and... You can have a giant function, and the whole, every single time you reference it within this function, it's gonna, it's gonna be John, because scope goes inside out, so mm -hmm. it's always gonna, it's always gonna check what's closest to it first before it reaches yeah. to the outer levels. But that's why you should just avoid using globals. Period. Because if other functions can change this, then like other functions that access this will now be tricked into thinking it's some value when it's actually changed by some other process that you have no, you didn't know ran.
And so whenever you have a global variable, you should essentially try and not really change it. Um, now, sometimes it's unavoidable that this happens because you need multiple things to know about a global state, and then that does need to change at times. But usually, we try to avoid like a like polluting the global namespace and keeping things local. But sometimes it is unavoidable. Um, so ideally, if one if a function if one function is going to use one variable in place of an index function. However, if multiple functions are going to use the variable, then you would want to keep the variable global, correct? Yeah, yeah, exactly. If, 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 if I needed multiple functions to access this, then I would put it outside all the functions. And then the, now they can all access it. Because um, if you're in a level above, you can always access something. If you're below, so the global scope can't access boss name. I mean, the global in the global scope, it can't access the local boss name to this function, but mm -hmm. it goes inside out. So everything inside can access everything outside, but outside can't access inside. Yeah. David, yeah. So does this relate to bracket assignment? Or... To bracket assignment? Yeah. Um, because we're switching the value of boss name to Brian to John. I'm not sure what bracket assignment is actually. I apologize, but do you know? What, do you... Well, basically, um, it's, it's a, the assignment operator to assign the value to the index position. Wait, sorry. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Um, but yeah, like this is just variable assignment. Okay. And this variable, the outside doesn't have access to it. The outside only has access to this, it can't have access to the inside scope. But the inside scope does have access to this, but it won't ever get mixed up because whatever's inside this function will only know about its local one first and once it finds the local version, it doesn't even it doesn't continue searching so, yeah. above. Yeah. So, yeah when it comes to global scope can be accessed anywhere. But yeah, you can be anywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. In this case, let's just say like boss name would be just saying boss or whatever, or whatever variable name. You mean here? Yeah. No, 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 like the variable name. You saying just change the variable. Oh. So let's say that, and you would do console dot log boss. It would be an error. No, like outside of. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It would be an error. You can't. Nothing outside of this function has access to this. So yeah, what's bad about global scope too is that whenever you call boss name, whenever you declare a name, you can't use that same thing anymore. So you've like basically like prevented yourself from ever using the same name. So that's what why it's kind of cluttering everything because if you declare something like user then anywhere else within your global scope, you can't use this um, variable. So should we switch the const to a let? Or it doesn't matter if you do let or const. You can't use this anymore in the global scope because it's now you've taken it. And I mean, it, it's the same thing here. Like if you do let boss, you can't use boss again. Like you can't do another let boss within this scope, within the local scope. But you can reassign it by just saying boss equals something new. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can reassign it. You can't use that particular variable name for something else, though, basically. No, but I, like you say, if I wanted to just make boss within that same function be equal to Chad. Yeah, yeah, you could do that. Yeah. You can reassign, but you can't redeclare it. Yeah, so that, you can only declare it one time. Yeah. You can reuse it as, as many times as you want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So again, if you want this function to do something, you should always just declare that variable within this function. Don't declare it outside because 
like if this function is the only function that's going to use user why like clutter the global namespace that something else might need user for but you're just you're just cluttering that global namespace and then only if only this function is going to use user then that's like a bit of a waste like you're hogging that that variable name when only this function needs it so you should just declare within this function Yeah, and, like any variable that a function needs, you should declare it within that function. Instead of try to access the Yeah, exactly. It's generally best practice to do that. Wait, within the local variable to... No, like local variable. Oh, so like let new user equals user. Yeah. Um, that's interesting. So let me see. I think for, I believe it will change both. So if I did new user equals like John, I think it'll change the outside one too. Let me see. That's that's a good. Point though, let me see. No, it shouldn't change the outside one because uh, you create a new. Yeah. One. It, it might not, it but it can't look inside, correct? Yeah, but it might. So, I think either for strings, I think for strings, you guys may be right. This is. It, it'll just make a copy of user because it's. Technically, if you were to declare a variable and then pointed it to an object, not so learn about objects later, but if we were to point it to an object, then that means that this variable points at the same object. It's just a reference. It doesn't make a totally new version. So, but I think for strings, you guys are right. I think it it won't reassign. Could you just uh, console log yeah, even within the function, maybe? Well, within oh, within the function, it'll be John. It'll yeah, it'll definitely. What if you did a uh, user comma new user? Let me see. But user use users global, new users local. So wouldn't user still log Brian and new user log John? I think so. So I th I think user will be Brian, new user will be John, and then here I think user will still be Brian. Mm -hmm. and but. Yeah. Yeah. But but if you had Yeah, yeah, actually you're right. It, it'll it'll always make a copy. But if this was an object Oh, that uh, you actually have to you have to you have to actually mutate a property of that object because if you're reassigning something completely, I think it won't be connected, so yeah, this is the same. It'll it'll be the same thing. Yeah, the reassignment of variables, like anything that happens inside that function, won't affect the outside. Yeah, yeah. David, question. Mm -hmm. The dashes in user. What does that symbolize? The dashes. Oh, this is just a. Uh, I'm just trying to denote. Like, I'm just trying to. I mean, I I guess this is kind of weird. I'm just trying to say that this is user. Like. Probably the yeah, more. String, so it's just I'm. I should probably do this because I'm just trying to cl clarify what's user and what's new user. Oh, okay. Yeah, just like visually, mm -hmm. as an aid. This is probably more clear, but I think if you did something like, uh, let me see. Um. <clears throat> new user dot a equals two. Yeah. So do you guys? If it's, uh, we'll go over this later on. I don't want to confuse you guys too much, but basically, if if you assign new user to user, and user is an object, 
then it's the same thing. Like new user is user. So when you just do new user dot a equals two, it changes it for everything. So even outside. Yeah, it, it just did it. Exactly, that's reference. Because when you assign this to this, they're actually pointing at the same thing. They're actually new user and user are both pointing at this. Mm -hmm. at but if this I object. use user in another function, would it still be it would still be A is one, right? No. You would change the If you call this first, if you call this function that reassigns this and, and I, we don't need to get too deep into it, but mm -hmm. it would it would it changes the whole the entire thing. So there is a way for a function to change a global variable variable. Just the object. Well um for objects if you assign it's just for assigning like this was just like really complicated example of like what if you were to do something weird like assign this to this because before you know what i mean like it, then these would point at the same thing no but i'm saying like if i want to console log some user later later on is it going to give me a colon two if you call this function first so if somebody uses that function before I console log user, then it won't reference let user equal a colon one. It will reference uh, user being a colon two. Yeah, if you call this first. Oh, uh, so there is a way that I guess so a function can cha reassign a global variable. Yeah and change it for other functions. Even though this is local to this function, mm -hmm. it references a global variable because you've assigned it to a global variable. So it still references it. References meaning like it points at the same thing. Like this points at user, which points at A1, but they all they all point at the same object. So I guess this is, the, I guess, the danger of making global variables. Exactly. Because say, this function or whatever was for I don't know. Uh, but you should never charting structure. But another file that does the payroll or whatever is referencing user. I, I like the way you're thinking. Yeah, that, that's exactly what happens like in, the, in the real world. Like, you have your code that's doing your payroll finance stuff, and then you have another, and then the other code is looking at some other feature like, uh, like. Um, business structure. Yeah, business data or something, and you don't want them to like muddle up each other's so data. So in this case, if that first user or was the boss and was supposed to be Brian, in this case, if my my finance file is referencing user slash whatever the boss was, which was Brian, and it expects it, it change it to be John, and, and the other file being, doesn't expect it to be John. It's still under the impression that it's Brian. But something else changed it to be John, and so now that code's like kind of screwed. So okay, so like if I have a finance code somewhere else or whatever that does the payroll, and a function like this, for whatever reason Brian has was made an object instead of just a string, and then it can reassign Brian as being John or something, and now my payroll might end up paying John, John instead of Brian. Brian. Yeah. Brian when you're supposed to, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's why if you ever, that's why you always keep it everything local. I like keep it local to your function. And if you ever wanted to do something like this, then you would probably make a copy of it. So this will be, you, we'll all learn this later, but if you do object.assign, then I believe it makes a copy. So now user outside is still one. And user inside is is two because you don't you're not referencing it directly. You're making a copy of this for this to to do whatever it likes to, but leaving this untouched. So you're making a copy instead of referencing it directly. If this is all confusing, like that's that's it'll come. We'll, we'll go over it multiple times later on. But the main gist of this is basically when you're inside a function, you have access to anything that's outside. 
regardless if this is an object or string or number. And you should never, you should, if you're gonna do something with this variable, with a variable, just define it in, inside the function. Instead of defining it outside and then using it inside, even though you can, it's not something that you should do unless you absolutely have to do it. Uh, wait. Oh, why is this referencing this? Oh, it gives you it gives you one right now. Oh yeah, before before this thing. Yeah. So why it does that is because when you declare a variable and you assign it to another variable and that variable is an object, then it's the same, it's the same, like, they're, the they're like... So are you saying that the user, like, outside of the function is gonna reference whatever's inside the function? Well, they're the same thing, like, this is pointing at this. Uh -huh. This is pointing at this, and so is this. It's also pointing at this. So if you reassign A to be a different value, you're, they're both, controlling the same object. It's not like it makes another copy for itself, unless you explicitly tell it to make a copy. So like, They're both playing with the same toy, and if one marks that toy, then the other one is still looking at the same toy, so it's gonna see a marked toy, or like a broken toy. So like, so when you try to like set to a string, does that make, does, does that make it, it's like making a copy, right? But in this case, yeah and I think for a string for a string this wouldn't change right no because a string is can't be changed like you can't re so like right now what I'm doing is mutating this object I'm basically mutating and like changing a property of a, a value of a property but a string can't even once you declare a string you can't change that string remember how it said like before like you can't do like string i string at at string square bracket 2 equals z you can't really change it so it's just there and like you can create a new string but you can't change that initial string so you're right you can't this will never be a problem with strings. Yeah. This would only apply to objects and numbers? Objects, arrays. Objects and arrays. That's it. Numbers, strings are immutable, meaning like you can't change it. So like you can't reassign, you can't change that string. You literally can't change that string. So this problem doesn't really happen with strings. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna go over like objects and arrays. Like, yeah, yeah, we're gonna go over all that and like uh, what like, you, when you should use each and why they're different yeah. and like what are the, cause those are pretty important yeah. um, for like performance and stuff. We said objects, talking about like attaching, right? Yeah, right. this is an object. And then we're attaching because array is also an object. Yeah, 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 technically arrays are also an object. Yeah, I'm talking about this, yeah, hash map, or map, or dictionary. I'm sorry if I confused everyone, but this was a good, um, this was like a, like, I, I just wanted to know for myself, too. So, it's, like, good to bring up these, like, weird scenarios sometimes, where you're like, oh, like, let me do something really weird. But... This is good for discussion and learning, but in your actual code, you should try to avoid doing weird stuff. Um, exactly, you shouldn't really do this. Yeah, it's like why complicate things for your reader when like you could just simplify it and make it as simple as possible for your reader because your reader probably wouldn't appreciate it if you did something like this and they're like, you have to like spend an extra like minute trying to reason about what's happening. But it's good for learning.
So again, strings, this would never happen because they can't be mutated. You can't change a string. Once you, once you're born, a string is born something and unfortunately, like, that's just the way it stays. But an object, it can be born with a value one and later on it could be a hundred. So let's go over some problems and let's see what um, again, like if you if you guys are wrong, it doesn't matter. Like this is a this is all just um, this is all just for participation and like you know like feel free to shout things out. But does anyone would anyone want to shout out what we would see here in this invocation? Yep, I'm so happy. This is a locally scoped variable. But again, I just want to reiterate, outside of this function, you, you, you can't access this. So outside of this, message is undefined. Yeah, so 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 if you don't console.log oh, message, message prior to the happy function, uh, what happens to it's still undefined. Yeah. So it's undefined because it's outside of the function. That yeah, because okay. you can't go outside in. You can only go inside out. Okay. So what if a function variable is defined? So do we have any volunteers as to what this will log? Yep. Yep. It'll go act locally. So um, if it was console outside the function, it'll come up undefined. No, oh, this it'll time it, think it'll be think globally. Oh, shoot. Because yeah. okay. it's above. There's one above and there's one below, but it goes inside, goes out. I already found it. I'm not going to go any further because this is what I'm going to use as a message, and I'm not going to go any further. So this could, yeah, have to reach this Yep, perfect. And if you were to, like, have a lot of log message and not go inside the function, it would be think globally. Yep. Think globally. Oh. If you console logged it outside of the function, mm -hmm. because you can't go outside in. So if you console logged message here, it would go, it would scan it, it wouldn't see any message. And then it would hit this, and I'm like, okay. But once it, it can't scan inside into functions, it just goes at the same level. So, does anyone have a guess as to what this would log? Think globally. Yep, think globally, because. It can't find it locally, so it keeps going out. Like once you're once you start inside, you can if you can't find it within the same level, it has the power to go out and to go out again and to go out all the layers, but it just can't do that in the reverse direction. So yeah. You guys are doing great. Parameters are also locally scoped. So this is what confused me a lot, is like, what does this really mean when I put this parameter between these parentheses? Like, what am I really doing here? You're basically doing let message <laughs> equals message. By doing this, it's not, you're not writing it out, but input, under the hood, it's doing let message equals message. It's doing the same thing, and we, did, we went over an example already of that, but that's what you have to think about when you do these. You're essentially declaring variables by putting them in these parentheses, but it's like a shortcut way of doing it. So does anybody want to guess what this would log? Yep, act locally. Because when you do this, it basically does let message equals message, which is become switched with like the string, so let message equals act locally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, log message 
with the uh, message themselves at the, at the parameter of message. Uh -huh. It means block message equals to message. Does that only work for function scopes or does that work outside the scope on function scopes? Like you said, does it mean other messages? Like, will it always mean block message equals to message? Only in function, functional scope? Or speak to it? Only in functional scope versus like. Versus like it, arrays or versus different kinds. Like the way it's written is function log, log message, uh -huh. message, right? Uh -huh. So that means log message equals to certain message. Yeah. But does that work outside of functional scope? Like is that across the board? Well, log a message, it isn't equal to message, it just means message is, a, is the variable of that function. Log yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so you're performing the function with uh, for that variable the string at the location. Yeah, this exactly. doesn't equal message. Okay. Yeah. This is, oh, I, I thought you yeah, I heard you say it equals the message and threw me off. No, oh, no. no, no, no. Okay. I meant like when you see this message as a parameter, mm -hmm. it's basically saying let message equals message. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Okay. Like so, it's the same thing as doing this. Uh, variable mm -hmm. declaration inside of this function, but instead it's this. Yeah. Yeah. So, it so basically when it's in the parentheses of the parameter section of a function, mm -hmm. it's pretty much saying let there be an x. It doesn't give an assignment for x, but it just says let there be an x, a variable. Let exactly. Variable. And then when you pass it a parameter, that's when the assignment happens. Exactly. So yeah. anytime we call that function, and then we put a param a new parameter we're then assigning the initial x or initial message or whatever was to the new the, thing to the new thing to the new string or number or yeah. whatever okay yeah so it's basically declaring it when you create the function and then assigning it when you pass it a parameter yeah when you call it and you put something else in between the yeah but all that you don't see it but it's yeah. happening like under so it's like initially, like, sorry, I'm an engineer, so I think mathematically. <laughs> so it's like message would be x. So when you call the function log a message again, it's saying let x be equal to act locally. Yeah. And run it through the function. Yeah. I mean, if you console log message, you still get those orders. After, outside the function. Outside the function. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't assign. Yeah. Right. Act no. Locally. No. Exactly. And it's just for that calling that. Yeah. Function. It's just locally scoped within the function. And for your function at the bottom, if a uh, function log a message, if you just left the parentheses uh, blank, it would be defined by the uh, left message up top, right? Yeah. So then it would be in flow for That's a great. That's a great point. Actually, yeah. I don't even think of this stuff, but like that, I believe would say undefined. Oh, it'd be undefined. Because you've already declared, like, under the hood, this says let message equals message. So when you console log message with passing nothing, that's, let's try it out. But I think it would be undefined. It won't be, it will, how do you guys will, think of this? The function won't look outside the function, the brackets itself, oh, yeah. and go to the, the message. Oh, yeah, function first. But wouldn't let be a global variable? Yeah, let's You're sort of overriding the local or the global. I thought it would work because you, it's since it, it's inside yeah, it's the kind of like overriding inside the function. It should still search above and outside its shell, or to the message above. We can try it. Yeah. I think it's gonna say undefined, but I might be uh, like you know like we'll we'll see. Okay. Oh, no, okay. Because under the hood, this is doing let message equals message. And then so when you console log oh, message, it, it 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 just it just. That makes sense. Yeah, so oh, you just always have to think like yeah. under the hood, it's let message equals message, even though it's not doing it, which is really what's hard. And I never really thought of it like that. I was just like, oh, this, like I'm just going to use it in here. Like, but this is what's actually happening. So if you did nothing, then it would still hit this first because oh. it's still doing this, like invisibly doing it. If we're not passing a parameter, I think it's just undefined. I think it just defaults to undefined instead of null, which is what this is right here. Yeah. 
undefined. But yeah, really good like edge cases that you guys are thinking about that I wish I could think about, but it's just I just miss those things. But yeah, those are really good points that you guys brought up. I think this is fluxing. Let me turn this off. All right. So nested functions. Does anybody, and we're going to do some of this in the workshops, but does anybody have any guesses as to what this will, I know this is going to take some time to think about it, but Yep, global outer inner. Yeah, let's see, global outer inner. Mm -hmm. So, are there any questions about that? It just yes. basically, uh huh? Um, how do we get global outer inner? Basically, you define this function here and then you call this function, but you don't call this. Well, you can't ca call this function until, wait, hold on. Do we even need to call the outer function? Because, um, all of the yeah. variables are defined with this global variable. We're mm -hmm. only going to console log its global variable, the global rule, and then console log outer variable, which is outer, and then console log inner variable, the global, which is inner. Yeah. I was just wondering if you even need to call this. I don't know what those mean as a reason. I think that will give you an error. I don't think you do because you that get the console log once you call the inner function. But the inner is in the outer function, so you can't call the inner without the inner function. Yeah. yeah, but when you declare this function, the it looks like it's already calling. But that's within outer. Right, right, right. That's within outer. but. What I'm saying is like this, what I'm saying is like this is running, this line is running still, before you, oh, but it won't run until I, I don't think it runs until you call the function. You're right. You're right. You're right. It doesn't require an inference because there's nothing in the parentheses. Yeah, yeah, nothing is in the parentheses, so it doesn't require input. But I was thinking like, if you just declare this function, will it start evaluating these? But it'll only run the code when you call it. So yeah, perfect. Um, but yeah, to explain why that logs is because you have global var here, references that, because it tries to find global var inside, but it can't find it. So it's not in here. It tries to find it here, can't find it. So it keeps going out, inside out. And then this outer var tries to find it, can't find it, oh, found it. And then inner var tries to find it, found it right away. It goes inside out. So you need the inner parentheses called within the local functional scope of the outer function so that you have yeah, console so log returned within the outer functional scope. Yeah, it's so not that you have it defined within that functional scope area. Otherwise it won't look inside the inner function scope area, correct? It won't even run that line of code, that console yeah, log. It won't run inside unless you call ask it. it to call the inner. Mm -hmm. And then since it calls the inner, then it's the console.log of those things are available within the outer. Yeah. So then when you call the outer function. Yeah. I have a question. Uh -huh. What if it was global bar out of, like, console.log, global bar, out of bar, and then um, something else in, um, besides inner bar? Would that come out undefined? What would that come out with? What would that be? If you, dif if you, you just. Change in a, the last one to uh -huh. something else. Like what? What change um, it to what? Like um, closed bar or something like that. I don't know. Oh, that would it would be. Undefined. I think it would just be undefined. Be undefined. Yeah. yeah. Or like closed bar doesn't exist. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now there's going to be nested functions. I guess we already went over this, but um, this one's a little trickier because. 
because they're the same name. So is, are there any guesses what this would log? Wait, no, yeah, 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 y
on the outside? What would it log be? outer because all you're doing is just calling the function. The input wouldn't matter. I'm kind of confused. Yeah. So like if I'm saying so like if you had this here and this says let collision equal enter and this is still the same, uh -huh. but then and this wasn't there, but I then call this function and I say outer as the parameter. What will this look at? Will it look here or will it look there? If you oh you can't say let collision again because this is already doing that. So you're you can't redeclare it twice. Like you can't mm -hmm. if this is collision. Yeah, you can't say let collision in here. Oh, okay, because it's already it. doing it. So, like, you can't actually do it again. So it would reassign it. No, uh, you can't redeclare it. Yeah, after it's already been declared. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So if you had collision here, you can't say in line five let collision equals whatever. You or but what if it just said collision equals? Yeah, then you can do it. That's okay. that's just reassigning. But then would it look at the collision equals inner, or would it go, say outer? I mean, if you didn't have this, then it would look at it would look at that one that you just did. Okay. If so, you didn't have this, but if you had this, then it would look like here. So, no, but I'm saying like so. If this was if this was up here, then it would go to here before it looking inside there. Say if I said just had. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. If I just yeah, had this you're reassigning part. it because you're reassigning it. So Got now it. that's the new value. Okay. This doesn't. This is that if you reassign it. If okay. This is collision equals new value. Then collision, like this isn't different than that. They're the same thing. Like okay. this is that. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's keep on going with these. Are there any guesses as to what this will be? outer because it goes inside out yeah so console.log so this will look here and i'll find this are there any questions on that one again this is the same thing as saying let collision equals collision so it's Starts here. Can't find anything in this scope, so I'm gonna look at that. I'm gonna look at this scope. Oh, I found it. Yeah. Yeah, you're not. Yeah, exactly. I'm not sure what, I mean, no one called anything, so. Right, but I thought, I thought you didn't call this, so this doesn't even run. I don't know. Let me try this. Yeah, this is just a wrong slide. Because you have to call the outer function. Uh, this is a slide. Uh, 12. 12. Oh, maybe I got like a, my maybe I have an old old version or something. But yeah, this yeah, one is. Calls, calls outer, so oh, okay. So yeah, if it calls outer, then it will be global. But I don't know why this doesn't have that. So, in this one, 
This one's this one's pretty tricky. Ooh. Are there any guesses? So it's so yeah 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 exactly uh huh. Outer, inner, undefined, not defined. And that's because it can't go outside in. We're almost through the, all of them. Um, let's see what this is. Any guesses? Uh, nope. Close though. This is tricky. Wouldn't this one be? Remember what this does. So that would be outer bar. So what would outer bar be? Outer bar, right? Outer. No, it wouldn't be outer. Outer bar, right? Because. Outer bar is here, but you're calling it with passing nothing to it. Oh, so it would be undefined. Yeah. Yeah, because you didn't put something in there. Exactly. So outer bar is undefined because these are pretty tricky. Exactly. If you, since you didn't pass anything here, yeah, it becomes undefined. That's a tricky one. Like honestly. But you guys are getting the hang of it. This is good stuff. Um, this is just saying that basically uh, conditionals are the same, work very similar to functions. Like you can't go outside in. And so um, are there any guesses as to what this will log? No, because you can't access block since it's inside this so if, it would block outside of it inside it would block the inside inside block. Block. yeah outside it would just log nothing oh yeah yeah inside one will log this yeah yeah, yeah. and then this one will be yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting confused now too all right this is you guys are good So like, so if so when you have a a function and the parameters pass, it's really just saying let there be a variable. Yeah. But it doesn't say it doesn't give an assignment for that variable. Unless you pass a parameter until, in. Until until you pass the parameter when you call the function. Exactly. You're so, exactly right. And so this one is just saying like, oh, like var ignore scope. So if you use var, then block will actually be defined. Hmm? Exactly. It was let. So that's why I guess everyone's like, yeah, like don't use var because you could like break the scoping uh, paradigm. So yeah, so we'll go into hoisting a little bit. So hoisting basically just means that variable and function declarations are moved to the top of the file. So are there any guesses as to if this will work? Yeah, it will because the Functions are hoisted to the top of the file, which means it doesn't matter if you're using this function keyword It doesn't matter where in the file you declare it You can declare anywhere you like and anywhere else in that file you like you can call this function because 
when you use this function keyword, like JavaScript will take this function and just put it all to the top. So like, does that work? With no. Const. If you use if you use const fun, const equals or const function equals the curly bracket thing with the the fancy little squiggly things like in the fat arrow. Yeah, it won't it won't work. Uh, so in this case, if you did like the usual function method, like no matter where it is. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Mm -mm. As long as you're, in, you're writing it this way. As long as you're writing this way, not like the arrow way. The arrow way is only at that line. Is this standard practice though to call functions that you use next to functions? No. I wouldn't do this in everyday code. Just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do it. So I wouldn't do this. Like I would keep everything at the top, make it read very linear, like define before you call. But like this can be done. I, I wouldn't do it. So yeah, this one doesn't work because you're using this like you're assigning it and you're not using the function keyword. So yeah, I'll say will will this work is not a function. Yeah. So basically, you're assigning this variable to a function, and then you're, and so this doesn't work because you're not declaring it like the other way with the function at the front. If you if you did something like variable assignment. It won't work because assignment happens at the line that's happening. That's when the assignment happens, but the de declaration will go to the top. But it'll just be like, this is not a function because this goes to the top. This gets hoisted. This let will this work. But the actual assignment happens in the actual line. So that's why that. That's why this doesn't work. That's still confusing. It like if you're declaring something, you should never try and access it before you declare it. If you do any sort of declaration, it doesn't matter if you do fat arrows or function keyword. Like if you just declare anything as a variable and then set it to this function value or whatever value you want, it it only happens at that actual line. Any questions about this one? So yeah, some best practices. Again, it it's uh, we kind of went over this a little bit earlier with all that functions changing the global variable stuff. But again, you shouldn't reassign global variables within functions because other functions might expect that global variable like it it can't ever trust the global variable to not be changed if you start changing it so yeah again if you're going to use always true just declare within the function Yeah, and so you also shouldn't clutter the namespace. Um, yeah. It's very common to encounter bugs in, in uh, applications just because something is changing something that you aren't actually changing, but some other code that's running is changing it. And so it's always confusing to have these, to have to think about all the other stuff that's happening, like <clears throat> that's changing what you're accessing. So you shouldn't rely on, so you should always try to scope your variables locally so you know exactly what's changing it. Only your stuff is changing it.
nothing else can change it because outside functions don't have access to your functions local scope so you can be assured that you have like a shield around your variables and no other outside processes can can change it russian yeah they're like russian nesting dolls and you want to keep your doll as deeply nested as possible so that the outside stuff can't change it and like all of a sudden you expect a value to be you know 500 but something else changed it to be a thousand and now all your calculations are like screwed up and you're like what is doing this it's gonna be like there might be like 300 files like good luck finding i mean you, you, you will be able to like trace it down but it might take like extra like day so if you want to save yourself the headache just try and scope everything locally but part of the fun part is that sometimes you can't so Sometimes you do have to use this like global state that everything sees because it's kind of like some of those some of those are unavoidable in web apps because let's say you're logged in to a website like everything needs to know you're logged in so you need to like you hit this service that tells you you're logged in so like that could that needs to like be at like global like scope that all your other components like your nav bar component and like your sidebar component your footer component your actual website all needs to kind of know about that logged in state so there are times where you're gonna have to have this global thing that all these other functions know about but there's like safe practices so that when you do change that global variable like you're doing it in like a really safe way where like everything's logged everything's tracked like you know um what the previous states were and stuff like that so I'm not saying it it's like you can ever fully avoid it, but a lot of times you can try to by just keeping your stuff locally scoped. That's pretty much it. Um, recap is, is here, but the best recap will be to jump into the workshop and figure out and work with this in your actual code. So feel free to take a little breather and then I'll pair off the for the workshop. But great input today, guys. Honestly, I'm not sure, man. I'm not too. I'm not too certain why why it would ever be useful other than that it's confusing. But hoisting means hoisting means like when you call a bunk function you can either call it above or whatever or below of which you're defining the function right